By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to watch the finals of the Knights of Thorn. You've seen all the matches here starting from the Swiss round one all the way up to this point, the finals. Two players remain. We have Baptiste from Belgium who's on Lion Dip. He's won tournaments with this deck and he's taking on probably the strongest deck, the deck, and that's being piloted by Ron and Ron also a multiple time tournament winner. So this is really exciting stuff. And before I jump into the deck decks, before I go and discuss the decks, I've got beautiful deck photos of both of these decks. I would first like to point out that as always, if you wanna go straight to the match, I understand, please check the description below because there you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG games. Click on there and it'll take you straight to the action. And also the description below is ideal if you wanna know more about the rule set if you want to find useful links, if you want to know more about the players, check out the description below. Okay, now that you're completely informed, we are going to continue with the deck deck. I'm going to start with the deck of Baptiste Lion Dip. Let's have a look. And here we see the list of Baptiste. So this is Lion Dip and it's really good in the hands of Baptiste because he's won tournaments with this. So he can definitely beat Ron today with this list. And the interesting thing here is you may think, okay, if you play Savannah Lions and Surrender Perfeet, they're both pretty cheap creatures to cast. It probably means you're going to you're gonna play aggro, but that's not true at all. This is really a control deck, but the reason you choose uh, to play with Surrender Perfeet and Savannah Lions is the fact that they're cheap to cast and they give you a good bang for your buck. You know, it's really easy to cast a Savannah Lion and keep enough mana open to play your Disenchant, your Swords, to counter something away. You just want to keep all your options open, right? And the same can be said for the Surrender Perfeet. I mean, it's a 3-4 flyer for 3 mana. That is insane value, especially in old school. Then on top of that, he's also playing with 2 Sarah Angel, Angels and of course a full playset of Mishra's Factories. Mishra's Factories do not underestimate them. They are killer. There's a reason that all the top decks, almost all the top decks, I should say, play with a full playset of Mishra's Factories. So these cards are going to give Baptiste the win because just like Ron, he is not playing with red. He doesn't have any direct damage to finish the game. Now, what is his strategy? His strategy is pretty much to play like a control player. He's going to play like a game of chess when to use your swords on what creature, when to use your disenchant. These are going to be these one for one trades. I expect uh, Baptiste to mainly use the Disenchants to take care of the Jam Day Tomes. After sideboarding, he's probably going to board in the Divine Offerings to take care of the Jam Day Tomes. And of course, they're great to take care of those Mishra's Factories. Then he's also playing, of course, with a full playset of counter spells, and they're going to be vital. Those counter spells, you want to use them to take care of the cards that are going to swing the game in favor of one person or the other. I'm talking about cards like Ancestral Recall, Mind Twist, a well-timed Brain Geyser after a Mana Drain. You know, that's what you want to use those counter spells for. The thing is, both players know this from each other. So it's almost like you're playing with the same deck. Yes, Lion Dip, it's slightly more aggressive. It's got a little bit more creatures. And yes, the deck, as we're going to see when we discuss Ron's list, is a little bit more controlling because of those two Jam Day Tomes, for example. But there's not that much of a difference. You'll see when you see the list of Ron, the differences are quite tiny. So it's really going to be on, yes, the luck of the draw, because there's always a, an element of luck when you play Magic, but also, of course, the quality of the players. What decision are they going to make when? And I'm just really looking forward to this game because I know that both players are quite good. And what I'm curious about is we see four Surrender Pafrits here, main, of course, for Baptiste. I know that Ron is playing two um, City in the Bottles in the sideboard. Is he going to board those in? Is Baptiste then going to board out the Surrenders and then going to put the Suchis in? Those are interesting questions. You know what? Let's take a look at Ron's deck and discuss his options. And here we see the deck of Ron, which is the deck and then a, a bit more of a creature heavy version, right? Because we see two Mahamoti Jins, a card you usually don't see in the deck. And we see four Sarah Angels. Now, Sarah Angels not uncommon in the deck, but usually you see maybe one, maybe two. You hardly ever see a full play set. We also don't see the color red here splash, splashed in that we usually see in the deck versions as well to have like that fireball as a finisher. But we do see a lot of components that are quite common for the deck, such as the Swords to Plows, here's the Disenchants, the Counter Spells. Hey, we've seen those cards before. Exactly, Baptiste is also playing those cards. The big difference here are those two Jam Day Tomes. So two Jam Day Tomes could be decisive in this matchup. Why? 
card advantage. Of course, Baptiste has a lot of answers for these two books, but then again, you know, you have to choose what are you going to use your cards for. Um, I also think the sideboard could be quite interesting because the question is, is Ron going to board in his two uh, city in a bottles there from the sideboard? And I also think that his Wrath of God is going to be quite useful against those you know, creatures of Baptiste. Remember, his deck is kind of creature heavy with 10 creatures. So that makes the Wrath of God in Ron's deck a little bit better. So it's going to be really interesting. And like I said, when I discussed uh, Baptiste's deck, this is really going to be a game of chess. When do you deploy what threat? And of course, those key cards in your deck that are going to give you the card advantage Cards like the Jam de Tome, but also a card like Balance, Mind Twist, Ancestral Recall, Brain Geyser, a well-timed recall. Those cards are going to be super decisive. So, I mean, this is this this finals is gonna be pure joy. Two top players chessing it out, but then with magic cards. This is it's gonna be awesome. You know what? Let's go, let's go to the finals. Who is going to win? Knights of Thorn, number eight. Is it gonna be Baptiste from Belgium or Ron from the Netherlands? Game number one of the finals of the Knights of Thorn edition eight. We have Baptiste from Belgium on the left. He is on line depth. On the right, we have Ron, who's on the deck from the Netherlands. And here we see Baptiste starting off. Oh, he's taking a mulligan there. Did have an ancestral recall. I guess he just didn't have the lance to cast the card. So he's going to shuffle up. And Ron is actually doing the same. Both players here taking a mulligan, shuffling up again. So here we go, both players cutting the decks and drawing a fresh seven. Now remember, this is London Mulligan. That means that for every time you mulligan, you need to put one card on the bottom of your library. So you get to look at your hand. This is the first mull. If you decide to keep, you got to put one card on the bottom there. So Baptiste's hand, he's got a lot of mana sources, actually a lot of mana sources. There's also a Black Lotus in there. He does have a lot of answers though, a Swords, a Disenchant. So he's going to keep, Ron is going to keep as well. Baptiste apparently on the player, starting with the Tundra. And I guess it's just going to be a pass here. He could have dropped the Black Lotus to kind of create a possible, you know, counterspell threat. And look at that, Ron just dropping a land passing turn. So both players just playing a, a dual land and pass. Interesting, you're going for the factory where maybe I would have expected... Okay, here we go. There's a uh, Black Lotus to kind of pretend that you may have a counterspell. Because I wanted to say I, I expected here an island so that Baptiste could pretend to have a counterspell. But of course, when you play the Black Lotus, you kind of have the same effect. Here we see a duel from Ron and a pass. And Baptiste, I wonder if he's going to attack with the factory. I don't think so. There's a City of Brass and a pass, exactly. So both players just playing very defensive. Here's a disenchant on the Black Lotus on end step by Ron. And we also see a time walk there in the hands of Baptiste. And this was a well-timed uh, disenchant, by the way. Here we see a Felwer Stone, and the Felwer Stone is also going to give him blue. So he now has access to a counter spell. There we see a disenchant. And this is also a good disenchant by Baptiste because, you know, now Ron can choose, am I going to counter it? That means that he cannot counter anything that Baptiste is playing. But if he lets a disenchant go through, you know, he also cannot counter. So it's kind of a catch-22. I think it's a good decision by Ron here not to counter. Here we see an attack by Baptiste. Ron dropping to 18 and a time walk as a follow-up. So he's going to take his turn again. There's the attack. Ron dropping to 16 and a pass. We also see that Baptiste has that uh, psionic blast in hand. And Ron, you're also passing the turn. Counter spell in hand for Baptiste. That is really good. Because that means he can protect his factory if he wants to. I mean, it's kind of up to Baptiste right now to think, how aggressive do I want to play? I mean, I think if you're Baptiste, you kind of hoped to draw maybe a Savannah line instead. Because a Savannah line, you can just play it out. It's going to cost some extra pressure. And, you know, you're going to force Ron in a, you know, you're going to force him to take an action at least. Here we see the attack. There is a disenchant. Are we going to see a counterspell here? No counterspell from Baptiste, just accepting it. And this is what I talked about, that these players kind of know what they want to counter, what they don't want to counter. I think a lot of players in this situation would have countered the disenchant. But on the long run, that is not what you want to do. You really want to focus your counter magic on those decisive spells. 
You will see another duel. I wonder if Ron's going to attack here for two. No, he's not. He knows that if, if he attacks, there's a really big chance he's going to get swords to plow shared or disenchant. Disenchanted. And he doesn't want that, that to happen, I guess. Passing the turn. If you're Ron, you could consider that maybe you do want your factories to eat up those disenchants because that might mean that your Jam de Tome has a bigger chance to kind of stay alive. The Jam de Tomes could be decisive in this matchup. And here we see both players just passing the turn. We see that Mox Ruby in hand for Baptiste. He's not playing it out, just passing. There we see Ron playing an island. And both players having a hand a grip full of cards. There's the pass though. There's another Mox. He is playing out that one. The Mox Emerald. Finding its way to the board. So both players not casting any creatures yet. Despite the fact that their decks are quite creature heavy for these type of decks. I mean, Ron is playing with a full play set of Sarah Angels. Baptiste is playing with two Sarah Angels, four Surrender Dips, uh, Surrender Pafrit, sorry. Ooh, look at this! Demonic Tutor, counter on the Demonic Tutor. Is he going to counter the counter spell? Is he going to back his Demonic Tutor up here? And he is going to do it, and now it resolves. No, it does not. Another counter spell. And this is great. This is what I talked about. You want a time when you want to go into a counter war. And nope, that is enough here to counter the, the Demonic Tutor from Ron. And Ron is passing the turn. He could have attacked here, I think, with the factory. Because Baptiste was completely tapped out in the sense that he didn't have access to white mana anymore. So there was kind of a free attack here for Ron. Let's see what he's going to do now. A little bit in the tank here. And okay, there's a Black Lotus. Cracking the Lotus here. Okay, what are we gonna do? There's a Jam Day Tome. This is interesting. So he's cracking the Lotus to play the Tome. Probably wants to draw a card on end step. And that's what he's going to do. And now he already has the value out of the Tome. He already has that card advantage. This is really good for Ron here, having that Tome on board. Even if Baptiste now plays a Disenchant, he can, of course, counter the Disenchant, but he can also, in response, draw another card. That would mean that the Tome has given him two cards already. And it's just going to be a very, a very bad trade for Baptiste. But, of course, if you're Baptiste, you want to destroy that Tome. But I don't think he has any... Disenchant in hand there. I see three swords to plows here and a Sayani Blast. So he attacked here with the uh, Mishra's Factory, putting Ron on 14. And I guess if you're Ron, you kind of want to dig towards your uh, your swords to plow shares to just uh, plow the uh, Mishra's Factory. It's not a huge concern though, because Ron is still on 14. But remember, Baptiste also has that Psionic Blast, so that's an extra 4 damage. He would drop to 10. So things could go quite quickly. There's an attack. Are we now going to see an answer? It looks like we are. Ooh, he's going to animate. There's the source, though. So he's going to take 3, pump it to himself. It is, of course, exactly exiled. So he's going to go to 17, take 2, go back to 15. What else? I think Baptiste cannot really do anything else, can he? Passing the turn and uh, Ron there signaling that he's going to use the book on end step. And that book is giving him so much card advantage. I think if you're Baptiste, you're really not happy. You want to get rid of the book. A lot of cards in hand there for Ron. I, I wonder what's, what's in there. It was hard to see. I saw a blue card there. Not sure which one it is there. We see a Chaos Orb. So he can play the Orb flip on the Gem Detome. Obviously, there is a huge chance of an answer by Ron if he does that. Ooh, is he going to play a Disenchant here? That would be ideal for Baptiste. Disenchant. And this is great because maybe it means that Ron now doesn't have an answer to the Chaos Orb. I think if you're Baptiste, you want to try this now. 
yes, it's a risk. There's a pretty big chance he's going to counter it away or has another disenchant in hand, but you've got to do something against the book, right? He does have a uh, mana drain there as a backup. I mean, maybe I'm missing something, but I think you're kind of forced to play the orb here. Exactly. Chaos Orb on the board. Are we going to see a counter spell here? So Baptiste kind of putting the cards down in a way saying, you know, I'm doing this. Let's see how you respond. I don't have a counter spell, which he does have. There we see the counter spell. There we see the mana drain as expected. Are we now going to see another counter spell? Yep, mana drain the mana drain. And this is ideal for Ron. We saw Baptiste winning that counter war earlier uh, that was about the demonic tutor. And now Baptiste is winning this one. Or sorry, Ron is winning this one about the Chaos Orb. It's all about the counter magic here in this standoff. Ron finding a mock Sapphire there. I guess if you're Ron, what you want to do is probably just play out the Sapphire, draw some more cards with your book. Maybe you want to do that on end step of Baptiste's turn. Maybe that's kind of the thing that he's thinking about. Do I want to do it main? Do I want to be do it on end step? My preference would be on end step, yep. even though he's got more than enough mana, though, yep. to do it main. It looks like he's putting five mana there. Does that mean that he has a Sarah Angel? Only three cards in hand for Baptiste here. I mean, at a certain point, Baptiste is going to run out of cards. And, of course, Ron still has the cards because he has that book. Tapping five. Ooh, it's a recall. Going to play a recall for two here, it seems. Are we going to see a counterspell? Dropping the Sarah Angel in City of Brass. What is he going to get back? Probably some counter magic. That's what I would do to protect that book. Mana Drain and probably a counterspell. Or is he going to go for something else? Demonic Tutor is still in there, of course. Could go for Demonic Mind Twist. Try to get rid of the hand uh, of Baptiste. Demolish it completely. But I would be tempted here to go for a second counterspell. And I think this is what Ron is thinking about as well. Do I want to play the demonic? Or do I want to go for the counterspell? He is going for the counterspell. I think this is a good decision. It must be really tempting with that demonic there to go for the demonic and try to play a mind twist, but I think this is a better decision. So the two mana there lost. He could have, of course, used those two mana for his recall. I think he kind of missed it there. There we see Baptiste. Okay, Baptiste is kind of going for the more aggressive strategy. He realizes that he's behind anyway, so he has to do this. I think this is a good decision. And of course, Baptiste knows about the counter spell. So there we see the mana drain. And that means, of course, five mana coming up for Ron. But I, I think if you're Baptiste, this makes sense because you know that Ron has the book. He, he's got all this card advantage. You got to do something. You know, if you do nothing, you're going to lose. So this makes sense. And at least Ron has now lost, um, you know, one of his counter spells. You know, it, it, it's something. So five mana for Ron here. He can use, of course, four to draw a card with the book. Tapping two white, one blue. He could also cast a Mahamoti. That would be pretty sweet. Ooh, is he going to cast a Mahamoti? Ooh, he's going to cast a Sarah Angel instead. Okay. So Sarah Angel on the board. He still has two mana left from his mana drain. Now remember, Baptiste, yeah, now he's going to use the remaining two mana to draw the card. And now Baptiste wants to do something in response. That's a good decision here, playing the swords. There's the counter spell on the sword to plowshare. So Ron really deciding. There's another one, though. So Ron really deciding to try to protect the angel. But the angel here still dies. I think, and, and let me know in the comments below how you feel about this counter spell by Ron. Maybe I would have kept the counter spell in hand to protect the book because the book is so important. But hey, I'm not in the finals, so let me know in the comments, <laughs> you know. Anyway, let's see what's going to happen next. Ancestral Recall. Okay, I didn't know he had the Ancestral Recall. Wow. This is great for Ron. Even more card advantage. And this is actually what Baptiste needs. Baptiste needs an Ancestral Recall to kind of get back into this. There we see a Soul Ring.
that soaring is, I mean, he already has a lot of mana, but it's still kind of nice having a soaring in your book. You just want to keep a lot of mana open, right, for these counter wards to play your disenchants and swords and reply to stuff. It's important here. And Baptiste is now going to have a look in the graveyard, probably going to try to see how many counter spells has he already played out. I believe a counter spell and a mana drain, right? Because he got them back with recall. Maybe two counter spells in there in the mana drain, but not more than that. He will see a city. There's a psionic blast on the life total of Ron. I, I wouldn't be too worried if I was Ron here. Oh, and there's the balance. That makes sense. And okay, there's a counter spell. Yep. And this is why you want to have those counter spells, right? For these decisive moments, because if that balance would have uh, resolved, Ron would have lost his entire hand. Still, not the end of the world because of that jam they tone, but it, it would have sent him back a couple of turns. There's a Mox Emerald. Looks like he's going to draw now in the main. No, he's going to pass turn. So an end step, now he's going to draw with the book. Ooh, or not. Did he forget to draw there? Oh, he's drawn too. Okay, now I get it. And remember, we cannot like hear the players, but he's probably verbally saying, I'm drawing a card with the tome, putting the mana there under the tome. And there we now see uh, a library of Alexandria for Ron. Oh, and that's going to make the crisis for Baptiste even worse. He is really behind now. If Ron also has an active Loa and a GM Daytona, that's just insane. And you see Ron here kind of checking how many counter spells are in there, how many disenchants, how many swords. <laughs> Trying to calculate what cards do I need to keep? How do I need to protect my assets? How do I play this? <laughs> Tapping three here. Ooh, a mind twist for two. Even though it's not, you know, the cards in the hand of Baptiste are not great, but it's again card advantage. And now he's gonna draw a card in response. There's the strip. This is great timing here by Baptiste, because that means that Ron can no longer draw an extra card from the Loa. So he's just gonna tap it for one colorless. Remember, Swedish is without mana burn. Ooh, look at that. What's he going to do for four? For five? Okay, he's playing another Sarah Angel and pass turn. And, you know, Baptiste is now top deck mode, so it's pretty much over. But let's see, maybe he can find some miracle way uh, to get himself back in the game. I guess it all starts for Baptiste with an Ancestral Recall, hoping it resolves. There's another attack, going to go down to seven. There's the Mishra's Factory. Baptiste really needs a miracle here. And the best card that you can play when you're behind, he's already played out, and that's the balance. It got countered. There's a Swords on the line. It's going to go back up to nine. I probably wouldn't have even played out that Swords, by the way. I would have just kept attacking. <clears throat> Although now, of course, you can attack with the Factory. So I guess it makes sense. You can animate the Factory, hit Baptiste for seven here, put him on two. I think that one has a summoning sickness still. Exactly that one factory. So he cannot do what he wants to do. He can animate one. Exactly. Attack. Then he can pump the other. Deal seven points of damage. Put him on two. And, I mean, I would just pass. Or can he win already? Does he have a card in hand that can win him the game? If he has a time walk, for example. No, there's a pass turn. And that's it. That's game number one. And... You know, this game, like I said in the deck deck, you know, it's decided by that jam they told. Ron gets so much card advantage, you know, and, and it, it's it just set him up so much, you know, and, and, and Baptiste just couldn't keep up, you know. He he couldn't find the answer to the uh, to the jam they told. And I'm really predicting Baptiste here to board in his uh, divine offerings. And I wonder if Ron's going to board in his city in the bottles. And if they do, we're going to find out in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So both players drawing their seven. Are they going to keep this time? We saw both players mulligan in game number one. Ooh, we see a gem day tome in the hand there of Baptista. So that's a card coming in from the sideboard. Realizing that's really this is really a control matchup. 
There's a Disenchant, a Swords there, a Demonic Tutor, and a Brain Geyser. Look at this, Ron taking a mulligan. That looks, uh, looks like a pretty decent hand here for Baptiste. Only two mana though, but I think he'll be fine. Then the question is, when is he going to tutor? Baptiste, of course, being on the play after losing that first game. I think if you're Baptiste, you're kind of hoping to maybe, you know, draw into a Black Lotus, draw into maybe a Mox Sapphire or just a Mox, just to get a little bit of ramp going. Of course, a land is also a good thing. And here we see the hand of Ron. There is a dual land, a Mox Ruby. Looks like he's going to keep, so he's got to put one card on the bottom. So he's starting with six, but he's on the draw. There we see a Tundra by Baptiste in a pass. There's a Mox Ruby and a Mox Jet. There's a Felwer Stone and a Duel. Okay, almost emptying his entire hand here. <laughs> With uh, three cards left, I believe. And he can counter now because that Felwer Stone can make blue mana because of the Tundra. There's a City of Brass and a Pass. And now if you're Baptiste, you really have to hope for uh, for a land now. And look at that. I, I thought he had a Brain Geyser in hand, but it's actually a, a Mana Drain that makes his hand slightly better. Then on end step, he's going to disenchant. Looks like he's going to disenchant the Felwer Stone to make sure that Ron doesn't have double blue. Now again, Ron can choose to counter this, but then he cannot counter anything that Baptiste is going to play. But of course, if he doesn't counter, he's going to lose the Felwer Stone. So we, we actually saw Baptiste doing this in game one. I think this is a really good play. And there we see a counter spell because I think Ron wants to keep this Felwer Stone. But now, even though the disenchant get countered, um, you know, Baptiste has his goal because now he can play whatever he wants. He doesn't have to worry about counter magic from the side of Ron. He's got kind of like a free turn and opening here. I'm expecting him to maybe play the Demonic Tutor. Oh, he's going to pass instead. Interesting. I mean, I guess it makes sense because now, of course, Baptiste can still counter. He's got that one mana drain in hand and the Brain Geyser as well, by the way. Tapping six, Mahamotijin, and here we're going to see the Brain Geyser. Sorry, the Mana Drain, and then he can play the Brain Geyser after. Or is he just going to Swords? I do like this play from Ron to kind of, you know, take the risk and say, you know what, here's a Mahamoti. If you don't have the answer, I'm going to start smashing face. There's the Mana Drain, though, and now he can Mana Drain into a Brain Geyser. This is the dream for Baptiste. Untapping here, so he gets six mana from the Mahamoti counter. I mean, he's got to play the Brain Geyser, right? Yes, he's got to discard some cards probably, but I mean... Another option here is playing the Gem Dayton, by the way. Maybe that's even better. Ah, oh, this is tough. Tapping two, taking a damage. Is he going to play the Sarah Angel instead? He could play Sarah Angel and the Tome. Nope, he is going for the Brain Geyser. I think that's the best... Uh, um, Decision here because you can just get such a huge card advantage drawing six cards You know Ron took the risk and he got brutally punished with that mana drain Now I wonder what Baptiste is gonna do he's got a land in hand there What are those other two cards are they a, a mox and a, a black lotus perhaps or two moxen? Okay, there's a Mox Emerald and a Black Lotus. This is ideal. I don't think he had a land drop yet, so he can play the Mistress Factory, right? Could drop the Factory. He could, for example, then drop a Sarah or play that Gem de Tome. There we see the Factory for land for turn. He doesn't have any counter magic in hand. And remember, Ron is stepped out, so this is kind of a free turn here for Baptiste. And drawing into the Emerald and the Black Lotus, that is just a blessing here for Baptiste. Second the Lotus, there is the book. That is probably the right decision to make here. I wonder if you're Baptiste, if you want to strip that dual land to kind of take away that second blue source from Ron. Then again, you know, Baptiste also wants his mana. He doesn't have that much mana. 
Looks like he is going for it though. Ooh, he's gonna go for the factory? Interesting. That is an interesting decision. Tapping two, going for a Chaos Orb. He's gonna flip the orb on the book. This is a great decision by Ron here. This is an important flip. Remember, the book can be decisive in these matchups. And there's a hit. Pretty easy flip there. I can tell you, flipping a Chaos Orb when you're at a tournament, that is something different. And I can imagine when it's in the finals, it is nerve-wracking. Here we see a Demonic Tutor. No counter spell by Ron here, it seems. I wonder now what Baptiste is going to go for. Is he just going to be an Ancestral Recall or does he want to... He doesn't have black, right? It's probably going to... Oh, it's going to be a Time Walk here. Interesting. Going for a Time Walk. Not an Ancestral Recall, so he wants to get that extra turn. Oh, he's got an Ancestral Recall in hand already. Okay, <laughs> that explains it. I was like, why isn't he going for the Recall? But he had it in hand. Or maybe he already had the Time Walk in hand. I couldn't see. Uh, but anyway, it's of course great when you have that. And he's just passing turn here. And there we see, is that a Divine Offering perhaps on the Felwer Stone? On the Felwer here. But I mean, Rana already has two blue open though. But still, it's good to kind of limit his options. And of course that Felwer Stone can make any color of mana because Baptiste has that City of Brass. So it becomes really, really good. There we see an attack for two again here, and a pass. Then in his upkeep, he's going to play the Ancestral Recall. No response from Ron. It's looking really good for Baptiste. And just like in game one, card advantage is decisive. That mana drain on the uh, Mahamoti Jin that made all the difference here for Baptiste. And that is probably going to give him the, vic the victory here. I mean, he's not there yet, but it's looking really, really good for him. Can, of course, attack again here with his factory. Gonna put Ron on 14, or perhaps he's got better options. There's the Pearl, tapping 4. Tapping 5. There's the Sarah Angel. And you may wonder, why is Baptiste still keeping a City in a Bottle in his deck? That is probably because he needs, uh, he wants to take care of the City of Brass, but more importantly, the Library of Alexandria, if it hits the board. It just gives you an extra answer to those Arabian Nights lands. There's the attack for 6 here. Is Ron going to go down to 10? There's a disenchant. Looks like he's going to go to 12. There's another Sarah Angel. And here we really see that full-on pressure. Remember, Baptiste is playing 2 Sarah Angels, 4 Serenibs, and 4 Savannah Lines. I still wonder if he boarded in Suchis instead of the uh, Serenibs. Perhaps he did, since he's playing with the City of Brass himself now. Putting Ron on four here, double attack. So he's now on four. And it's not looking good for Ron. I think this is game, game people. That means it's one, one. And man, that brain geyser, that was the play. And I do, I have to say, Ron, you had cojones to play out that Mahamoti. I think it was the cool thing to do. But unfortunately, you got punished, man. And now we're going to go to game number three to find out who's going to win the Knights of Thorn edition number eight. Game number three, here we go. So Ron on the play here. So I guess, does that give him some advantage? I think in this, these control matchups, a little bit, but it doesn't matter much, I think. Anyway, let's look if, uh, let's see if both players are going to keep. And uh, it looks like they are. So for the first time, they're both keeping their opening hand. So that's always nice for the decisive game. And then we see the opener here with a, uh, a Mox and a Factory into a Felwer Stone. And look at Baptiste, he's really already in the tank here. He's got a Black Lotus there, he's got a Mox Emerald, he's got some lands, he's got a Savannah Lines. You would kind of think maybe just turn one Savannah Lines, put a little bit of pressure on. He could of course go for a Sarah Angel turn one, that would be super risky though. Now he would sack his Black Lotus. I don't expect him to do that, knowing Baptiste. It's a bit more conservative, but maybe he's also considering playing out that Chaos Orb turn one. Has a Disenchant, of course, in hand as well. He could go for Mox Emerald, Tundra, Disenchant on the Felwer. That's actually not too bad as well. 
I mean, what if Ron doesn't have any white or blue sources in his hand? You know, he's opened with the Mox Emerald and a factory. That could be quite interesting. And of course, Baptiste also has that Chaos Orb. So even if Ron can find another, you know, let's say a Tundra in hand, he could Chaos Orb flip it the next turn, you know, Baptiste. So he could kind of control the mana flow of Ron. <laughs> Looks like he's going to go for something else, though. Nope, he's not. He's really in the tank here. This is why Magic at this level is so interesting. Both players know each other's decks. They know that smallest misplay or decision can change from being a winner into losing. And look at this. This is so interesting. I am really surprised about this move. A disenchant on the fell. We're using his Black Lotus to do that. Now he's got two mana floating still from the Black Lotus, so what he could do, of course, is play Chaos Orb and play a land for turn and flip the orb. Is that what he wants to do? Or does he want to play the Savannah Lines? Gonna play the Savannah Lines. Interesting. And he's gonna play the Chaos Orb, so he's got enough mana to do that, but now he can no longer flip the Chaos Orb as well. One of the scenarios that he could have done here was go for the Chaos Orb and flip the orb on the factory or of course on the Mox Emerald, kind of trying to control the mana flow of Ron here. There's going to be a disenchant, yep, a divine offering, but it's uh, it's the same, the same effect. Taking care of the orb. There's the attack for two here, putting Ron back on 20, and there's the pass. Very interesting opening by Baptiste, and a perfect answer by Ron, having that uh, dual land in hand still, and then the divine offering on the Chaos Orb. The good news for Baptiste here though is that Ron doesn't have double blue. There we see a Library of Alexandria not too relevant at the moment. Baptiste only having two cards in hand. And there's just a pass and no lands it seems for Ron here. There's a Sarah Angel. He can play the island. Go for the Sarah Angel play. Ron doesn't have double blue to counter. He's first gonna attack. Ron taking the damage 18. Look at this. Baptiste is not playing out. He's going to go. He wants to go up to seven cards to activate his Library of Alexandria. So he's taking his time. And Ron here going to 16. These are all very interesting decisions, right? Also a lot of cards in hand by Ron, but he's got a serious land problem. Okay, finding a Mox at least. Mox Pearl, four mana. I wonder if Ron is still playing with Wrath of God. It looks like Baptiste boarded out the Serendips, since we haven't seen them at all. There is a Chaos Orb. Is he going to flip? No, he's going to pass. Okay, there's a Soul Ring. But I think if you're Baptiste, you still want to go up to seven, right? He's on six at the moment, I think. So he's probably not going to play anything out unless he has to. Okay, five cards in hand, it seems. And he's just going to pass the turn, I think. Ooh, no, he's not. Is he going to go? Interesting. Very interesting play. He's playing out the island. Probably just to keep counter magic open in case Ron wants to flip on one of his blue sources, then he still has two blue left to potentially counter. That's why he's playing that island. There's a mind twist in hand. Wow. If Baptiste times it right, he's got a mind twist and a counter spell, but he just needs more mana though. That soul ring's looking really good, but remember, he still wants to go up to seven to activate his Loa. Or is he going to leave that plan? Another line of play could go for Soul Ring. Try to Mind Twist for three with the Counterspell backup. That's another line of play here. <laughs> Looked like he wanted to tap there the Emerald for the Soul Ring. There we see the Soul Ring. And pass turn. So he's going to wait with that plan. Very interesting here. It kind of looks like Baptiste is in two modes. One side of him wants to go up to seven cards and the other side 
wants to use the cards that he has in hand. Here we see Ron just controlling the game, passing the turn. So, I mean, Ron probably has some counter magic in there as well. So this is really tough here for both players. When to do what? One wrong decision can cost you the game and the tournament. These players have been playing for 12 hours, by the way, or 10 or something. Like it's, these days are crazy, I can tell you that. We start like 10 in the morning and it just goes on till like 10, 11 at night. He's got a strip mine there, that's interesting. He could consider stripping the only blue source on the side of Ron. That must be really tempting. I think I would do that, to be honest. But it makes sense that Baptiste is taking his time. I mean, it's 1-1, the decisive game. Who is going to win the Knights of Thorn? But strip mine there in hand. Five cards. Also, we see a mind twist there. He could also simply pass, try to go and work his way up to seven with that Library of Alexandria there. Okay, playing out. Oh, this is so interesting. Then he plays out the strip, but he's not using it though. Fascinating, fascinating. Perhaps he's kind of, you know, working on the mana for that one play where he wants to end twist and protect his mind twist with the counter spell. There we see a Black Lotus. Ooh, that's going to make things different and more difficult for Baptiste. But this is a really good move by Ron. Having that Black Lotus means that that one dual land is not that important anymore. It still is, but it's not as important because he still has that Black Lotus to generate any color of mana he needs. A counter spell on the Black Lotus, though. That makes sense. I really understand this move by Baptiste. I think it's a good decision. Now, of course, if you're Ron, you see that uh, Baptiste no longer has two blue open. There's a recall. So he's going to get back the Lotus? It looks like that's exactly what's going to happen here. It looks like he's going to get back the Lotus. The question is, what is he going to discard to get back the Lotus? He's got the Mahamoti. I mean, that would be tempting to just ditch that. Yeah, exactly. I think this is a good decision. So the Mahamoti goes to the bin. The Black Lotus finds its way back onto the battlefield. Now, of course, Baptiste can play a disenchant on the Black Lotus. Yeah, that's exactly what he's going to do. We're taking a damage. There's the disenchant. This is a good decision because Ron just paid a two for one to get his Black Lotus back and now the Black Lotus is gone. Of course, Ron can respond here to sack the Lotus. Looks like he's gonna do that. Is he then also gonna flip? I wonder. He could make three white, play a Swords on the Lions, for example. Yeah, so there's the Swords on the Savannah Lions. It's also going to flip. Interesting. I wonder what he's going to flip on, though. It looks like he's deciding not to flip. I, I kind of think that's a good decision, because what do you want to flip on? The interesting thing, by the way, is before you flip, before you say what your target is going to be, your opponent has to decide if he wants to do something. So, for example, Ron now says, I'm going to activate my Chaos Orb. Then if Baptiste wants to use his Strip Mine, he's got to do it now before knowing if Ron actually is going to target the Strip Mine or the Loa. Or, so you don't have that information yet. Once your opponent says, I'm going to target this, you can no longer respond to that. 
So he's going to flip here on the city of Brass. So this is really a battle of resources, right? Yep, that's another hit. So Ron hasn't missed a flip yet here in the finals. Passing the turn to Baptiste. And Baptiste no longer has access to black, by the way, so he can no longer play out his mind twist. So Ron realizing how important Mind Twist and Demonic Tutor are and thinking, you know what, if I take care of that city, I cut off the color black for my opponent here. And that is a great decision because Baptiste had that Mind Twist in hand and he could have played it out because Ron's completely tapped out, couldn't have countered it. Ooh, look at that. He has a Mind Twist in hand himself and a Wrath of God and two blue cards was hard to see. Oh, and look at Baptiste there. He's really in the tank. He's like, what am I going to do? Showing there his hand. Mind twist, Sarah Angel, and a blue card that he couldn't identify. Is that a recall, perhaps? Wow, that is interesting. Is it, If it is a recall, would you recall here in this, uh, in this situation? It is a recall. Wow, that's tough. He could, for example, recall for one, get back his City of Brass, and it gives him access again two black mana, but it's not ideal. He could also recall, of course, the Black Lotus. That's probably then a better decision if you want to play out that uh, that Mind Twist. Look at this, he's gonna do it though. Oh, he's gonna get back to City. Yeah, he's got enough mana anyway, so that's a better decision than the Lotus. And look at that Mind Twist here. And this is a really good decision Bob Baptiste. What a play. Leveling the playing field here, so both players having no cards left in hand. Wow, what a finals this is, and what a good decision by Baptiste. There's the strip on the strip, also a good decision here by Ron. Because that strip mine would have been a big problem. Hey, look at this, a jam day tome. This could be decisive, this jam day tome. Ho oh, ho, disenchant, disenchant, and this is so good. For Ron here, what a final. Oh man, Ron really needed this disenchant to stay in the game and he found it. Both players on top decking mode. There's a psionic blast here on the Mishra's factory. Baptiste dropping to 15 because of his own psionic blast. Both players top decking mode, one card in hand each. 15 life for Baptiste, 16 life for Ron. Wow. Both players now kind of taking a moment here. There's a duel and a pass, so just one card in hand, two cards. There's a Savannah line and a factory, so some aggression here. I think if I would be Baptiste, I would just drop that Savannah line, you know? So, I mean, maybe Ron doesn't have an answer. Just drop it and start attacking, smash face. Ron on 16. He's actually playing out his entire hand there, factory and lions. That's some pressure here for Ron. There's the attack for four. Are we gonna see a response? Disenchant on the factory, taking two from the line, dropping to 14. Tapping five, Sarah Angel. Ooh, this Sarah, that's a problem. And there we see Ron, I believe, or Baptiste, I believe, drawing in a mana drain. It's too little, too late though. Ooh, Baptiste dropping to 11, pass turn, another counter spell. Counter magic is great, but not when you're behind on board. You wanna draw into that uh, swords to plowshares. Nope. Oh, is he just gonna get killed by a Sarah here? It's gonna go down to three. Are we gonna see another angel? A jam day tome. Counter spell on the tome. Well, mana drain. Untap. Nope, that's it. Wow, 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 wow. What a final. And congratulations here to Ron. And it kind of shows Ron that playing with th all those creatures in your deck. It paid off, didn't it? Because you won here the Knights of Thorn edition number eight. Here we can see his deck. Congratulations, Ron, on winning the finals. What a game. Absolutely amazing. Thank you, Baptiste and Ron, for sharing your finals here on uh, Timmy Talks. Also, a special thanks, uh, thank you to Mari for organizing the Knights of Thorn for all these years and all the fun you're bringing to old school players like myself. Thank you so much. And a big shout out to Dion for recording these matches with your stellar equipment, man. I love the footage. Thank you so much. 
And um, I'm looking forward to the next uh, Knights of Thorn, which is actually coming up uh, pretty soon. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, I would also like to thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks. If you want to see the other episodes from this tournament, if you've missed a couple, check out the description below because there's the link to the Knights of Thorn playlist as well. So you can just uh, check out all the matches from this tournament. And before you go, I'd like to ask you to like, share and comment on this video. All these things are free and really help Timmy Talks move forward and of course if you're not a member yet please hit that subscribe button and ring that bell okay thank you for doing that and then there's one last thing that you can consider and that's becoming a patron of Timmy Talks via patreon.com slash Timmy Talks if you go to that website you can find out how you can support Timmy Talks financially so if you enjoy the content that I make please consider supporting Timmy Talks financially as well because the patrons are really what keeps my channel afloat and I'm really thankful for their support and please consider also becoming a supporter of the show you can already support Timmy Talks starting with just one dollar a month and for that dollar you get access to the Timmy Talks discord all the online Timmy Talks events and your name will be mentioned in the end scroll. What end scroll? This end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Somebody can see.